Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so, so much for joining me. So today I have a bit of a list video for you. I want to talk about some brands who I no longer like because it's their fault. <laughs> Might not even experience the brand. It is, it's just their fault that I don't like them. And I'll explain a little bit more what I mean. And I'm just gonna do an eye look. Today I'm gonna use the Sigma and Nook palette, which I received in PR recently. And um, I just wanna try it. So let's do that. Just before we get into it, if this is your first time here, hello. My name is Robert, I'm a professional makeup artist here on YouTube and also in real life. It's my goal to help you, I don't know why I did this, <laughs> to help you become a pro yourself or just someone who's really good at makeup. So if that sounds like something you are interested in, then do please consider subscribing. My first brand on this list is going to be Winx Club. Winky Lux. <laughs> now there's a reason for this. Um, I liked Winky Lux, right? I was using their products before. Their highlighter that was like that little flower thing. Beautiful. Loved it. It was really cute. Was it a bit gimmicky in terms of packaging? Absolutely. But who doesn't like a gimmick? And then um, the Applebee's collaboration happened. So listen, oh, you know what? I need to just tidy up my brows a little bit because they look like um, crap. <laughs> you know, you know me. Love, love um, heavy theming, especially theming that doesn't make sense. Like if a brand, let's say a brand, what's a, like Fenty? Mm, I can't remember. No, so say like, you know, Fenty came out with a collection and it was in collaboration with Toast. You know, I'll be like, oh my God, a toast collection. Love it. I love toast. <laughs> I would be all on it. I absolutely would. Because it doesn't make sense. It's food and makeup. Like, what's that got to do with anything? Love it. When I saw Applebee's, who, by the way, let's not pretend we're, like, better than we are. Applebee's is great. Applebee's, <laughs> I love it. Maybe as somebody who doesn't get it that often, well, at all in the UK, when I go to the US, I'm like, yeah, Applebee's. Um, what's the thing I have? The lime, lime, what's that lime chicken? Lime Fiesta chicken? Oh my God, I love it so much. Let me tell you, America knows how to do cheese. And I was like, oh, okay, love it. So let me try it. Now I saw the names. The names are quite obvious. You know, they're sources, they're names of sources. So that's obvious where the inspiration is from. And you know what I thought? You know you get those lip balms that maybe smell a little bit like bacon for artificial bacon. Like there's there's an artificial bacon smell that is nice. You know what I mean? There's an artificial cherry smell that's nice because cherries don't really smell like that, let's be real. So I saw the names and I was like, you know what? Yeah, that could be, that could be fine. Little hint of a smell or a replication of something similar to the smell of these sauces. Oh, it still makes me gag, like thinking, thinking about it. So I get these glosses, right? I wait for ages for them to arrive because I think I have to get them shipped from the US to my a US address and then sent to me. And, or did I? I can't even remember. Anyway, let's say we di I did for like theatrical effect. I, I pop them on. The first one I try is like the bar, was it the barbecue one? Which is a taste I can stomach. I like bar, I like barbecue taste. Oh my God. It tasted like I just got straight up barbecue, smelt like, and tasted like I got straight up barbecue and put it on my lips. It tasted like barbecue sauce. It smelled exactly like barbecue sauce, exactly like it, to a point where it's like, okay, no, that's too far. The next three, oh God, honestly, it makes me gag. I need to, this is pressing my throat too much. Like, it, it was, I was wanting to throw up. It was horrendous. It was to a point where it was exactly like the sauces, but, not in a good way, like, oh my God, they've done it exactly. That shouldn't be hanging up, hanging around on your lips, under your nose, on your lips. It doesn't make sense to me why you would want to do that. That experience that I had with Winky Lux and those glosses, I still have them. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with them. They were expensive. I can't just get rid of them. It's, it's ruined, it's ruined the brand for me. It's ruined it. I get like emails from them and immediately delete them. I sign up to their like, um, emails, you know, whatever brands do, emails. And I instantly delete them because as soon as I see the, the words, Winky Lux, I now think honey pepper chicken on my lips. And it's, it's a bad memory, it's a bad time. I saw other people try them and they were like, okay, this is gross. Um, some of them were gagging, some of them weren't. But you know what, it's like who made that decision, decision 
to go that intense with those fragrances, those smells, those tastes, those flavors. Like, I'm not even joking. You could pour one of those lip glosses on a piece of chicken and you wouldn't know it was lip gloss. And you know, it's different when it's like sweet food, like, oh, it's chocolate scent or, um, what's another sweet thing? Honey, a honey lip balm. But when it's savory, when it's like, like imagine a mayonnaise. Imagine me coming out of a clear gloss. Yeah, but it smells and tastes exactly like mayonnaise. Oh, it gets me right here. I just think it's the absolutely, absolutely most ridiculous decision and I can't, I can't think about them. I'm just so sensitive to that experience that now I want to throw up every time I think about it. A brand makes me want to throw up. Am I being dramatic? I would say absolutely not. This one I would love to know your opinion on because it's, I mean, it's not controversial in any way. <laughs> I'm gonna make this eye look like purposefully matte because I want to try something on top of this. Beauty Blender. Let's talk, let's talk about Beauty Blender, the brand Beauty, Beauty Blender, Beauty Blender, because again, tell me your opinion. When they started going into makeup, into complexion products, I kind of lost trust in them a little bit. They were doing great at their tools. Some of them a little bit ridiculous. Some of them really good and actually really useful. Actually, even the ridiculous ones are useful. But something about when they came out with, was it their foundation they came out with first? That just made me like, hmm. The shade range wasn't great, one. Two, the packaging was designed weird and not that great. The concept was kind of good because it's kind of like a multi-selling point where you kind of have to, you don't have to, but it's a good idea to use your beauty sponge with the foundation so it can fit in that little bit. You can boop, boop, boop. But then that's also another point. They kind of expected you to use a blender with it. <laughs> Beauty blender, their own one. And then I would see things on their socials of them, you know, t um, swatching it on someone's hand and the video was completely blurred, like to a point where it's like, okay, that's ridiculous. It looks like one of those adverts, you know, that when they put like foundation on and they put like chia seeds on and it all suddenly goes all blurry. It was kind of like that. And I have just never been interested in any of the color products they they um, have on the market at all because of that, because of like the initial launch, everything like that. I'm a firm believer, right? If I was to have a brand, I wouldn't even consider launching foundations, concealers, unless my brand had a huge budget that allowed me to do research for at least a year, <laughs> have, uh, have, many, many, many shades. It just kind of felt a bit, Beauty Blender were this huge brand in the field of what they did, which was sponges, <laughs> let's be real, but still a great thing to be huge at. And then when they came out with these color products, these complexion products, it kind of lowered my expectation of them. It kind of, they kind of brought themselves down to being the top of makeup application to the bottom of foundation. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Well, actually, there's been worse foundations, let's be real. Like, I think they still could have gone on with their makeup application tools. Create something new, create something different. You are the leader in makeup application tools at this time. I don't know what they're still doing. But now you have like this other part of your brand which isn't leading in any way. Also, their powder shit is so bad. But I still use their blenders. I still use this occasionally, I still will. Oh, look. I have this, I have this right here. Okay, so next up is Anastasia Beverly Hills or Anastasia Beverly Hills, depending how fancy you are. There's many reasons why this brand has ruined itself for me. <laughs> Let me start way back with the one and only experience, first and only, I should say, experience I had with the, any of their products, and that was the Subculture Palette. Let me tell you, this was years ago because I was living in Florida at the time, and I was so excited because it wasn't that available in the UK at this point. Was it? Am I making it up? I feel like it wasn't because I used to go to Sephora and be so excited because I could buy brands like Anastasia Beverly Hills, Huda Beauty, all these brands that you couldn't readily get in the UK, I, you know, used to buy. My first Anastasia Beverly Hills palette was the Subculture palette. Let me tell you, that, that palette 
was like trying to move chalk round. It was, it was one of the worst palettes I've used. And I did create some looks with it when I wasn't really reviewing products. I was just doing looks and then posting it to Instagram. So I wasn't like, you know, giving in-depth reviews, but I really didn't like it, but I really struggled to use it because I wanted to use it because it was so expensive, so expensive. And I, I have a time I wasn't making that much money either, but I was, ex I was excited. I was excited to use it. And it was just a really terrible experience. And then to be quite honest with you, I never had an, a good experience with any of their stuff again. Their contour and highlight palettes were the, were very comparable to the, some of the cheaper ones you buy on like AliExpress or Amazon, you know, those ones that, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. There was nothing special about it. I'm trying to think if maybe I liked one of their brow products, but I don't really think I did. And they were like definitely becoming the brow people off that time. And you know what? This was kind of a time when makeup was getting really, really popular online. It was, it was like in its heyday. And I feel like a lot of people maybe hadn't experienced the want or need for products like contour and random eyeshadow palettes. So they hadn't maybe used something before that it was comparable to because it was shit. <laughs> It was shit. The one good thing they did do though was their, um, one of their angle brushes, which was like paper thin. I used to use it for my brows. It was, it was perfect. And then they kind of just went on to be too much. Give, uh, not giveaway. Yeah, giveaways, um, PR lists. Um, it was like, everybody wants to be on their page for some reason. And it, it was just too much. And I think too much of something is too much of something. You know what I mean? It gets too much. And it, it just felt a little bit like, and then Norvina started happening. I was like, oh, fuck. That wasn't, those palettes aren't even great, to be honest with you either. But I feel like we do something as consumers where we, a brand tells us they're good. <laughs> A brand will tell us they're the best. A brand will tell us by their following, by how many people share their stuff. And it's like, until you try it yourself, you're like, oh shit. And then of course, like bits of drama with the owner of Anastasia Beverly Hills. And it's like a brand owner who is clueless, first of all, as to what you should and shouldn't be liking on social media, which is a kind of like, you know, you're not sorry, you're sorry, you're a caught out situation. To me, when people make poor business decisions, I just think you're an idiot. And then, and some of them are so simple, <laughs> like not liking things, certain things on social media. But also at the same time, you shouldn't be liking that kind of thing on social media. If you don't know it, Google it, look it up. Of course, puts you right off a brand, as it should. Okay, on to our next. And this is one who I'm, I'm wary of now. I'm like, mm, mm. and that is Super Goop. Let me explain. So Super Goop is a sunscreen brand that make really, really nice sunscreens. <laughs> to be honest, they're, they're nice. Got nothing against them except one. And there's two, there's two actually sunscreens that I, kind of disappointed me from Supergoop. And I can't remember the names of them off my head because I don't own them anymore. So I'll put them on the screen here. One of them, what, here's the situation. I, let me get some lashes. So I'm um, away on vacation, having a great time in a hot country. Why am I, um, where's camera? <laughs> in a hot country, it's nice. It's, it was um, good because there was air conditioning. But you know when you're away, you want to go out in the evening, you don't really want to be wearing makeup, especially if it's hot and humid. You just kind of want your skin to look nice. So I got the Super Goop, is it Glow Screen? The one for the, the, one for the face. One, I believe it had glitter in it. I tried two different things. Two, this stuff, I went outside in daylight because I was, I got ready in the bathroom and we were going to dinner and the sun was still out. And my fiance was like, There's, you got like a line in your face. I was like, a line? I'm not wearing makeup. I'm wearing, I'm just wearing sunscreen. And he was like, yes, yeah, orange. And then because I put it all like round here, I was like, oh my God. And I went to, a, we went back in <laughs> to our room and I looked in the mirror and I was like, oh my God, that it's, it's streaky. And I was trying to blend it in and move it around getting caught up in my hairline, getting caught here, orange here. It, it was like I, it was like it was a foundation that wouldn't just move. It was just, you know, like those velvet cushions or those sequin cushions when you move it one way and it's one picture and you move it one way, it's the other. It was like that. I'm just drying my lashes. It was like that. Like it just wouldn't sit or blend into the skin. And it was just a glittery mess. It looked terrible on my chest, streaks everywhere. And it is just, I don't know, considering I was tanned as well, it just, it didn't look, it didn't look nice. No, I wanted was like a glowy skin with my tan. I also use a hand sunscreen and it, um, it, 
was quite greasy. And I remember I put it on. My idea was, I'm gonna keep one of these in the car because my um, hands, you know, always on a steering wheel in the sunlight. Not that we get much sun in England, but you know what I mean. It still exists. Put it on and it was like, tr it was like I put butter on a steering wheel. It was really difficult <laughs> to blend into the hands, to rub in for it to disappear. It definitely isn't a kind of um, hand cream that I like. I like the hand creams that absorb really quickly because if you have like that oily slip on your hand, you just don't want to touch anything. So then when I got back from vacation, I was like, you know what, I just want something. All I wanted was something, an SPF that kind of enhanced the tan. Have my legs out, have my arms out. I just wanted something that made it look shiny and smooth and nice, you know? I asked on Twitter, Jackie Aina recommended this one from Dermalogica. Exactly what I was looking for. Has this kind of like strobey look to it. But that's two products from that I tried, but I was like, what these are intended for doesn't work so well. Slippery hand cream, streaky sunscreen just wasn't for me. Okay, so here's a brand that a lot of people like, and when I tell them my experience with it, they're like, you did it wrong. And I'm like, I know I did it wrong. <laughs> so this brand is Tan Lux. Let me tell you. <laughs> so before I went to Florida, early, early last year, it was October, was trying on clothes, getting myself ready. And I looked in the mirror and I looked at my legs and I was like, my legs, I, my legs are see-through. I can hardly see them for how pale they were. I was like, I can't, I can't be tanned here down and then stop, you know, stop at my legs. I thought, let me just, let me fake tan a little bit, the smallest, smallest amount fake tan. So I got these tan lux drops. They were actually gifted to me somewhere. I was like, it's a sign, let's do it, it's a sign. And I, so I, <laughs> so you drop these drops in like your moisturizer, right? In your, in like your body moisturizer. And I was like, let me practice. I'll practice on my legs. Didn't realize, I think it said, do a certain amount of drops. And I was like, no, that's not enough. So I put a few drops, a few more drops in. I woke up the next day to orange streaky legs on my feet. You could see where I just went like on the top and it was done. I just... But I also didn't like the color. And I think that's what really got me was the tan drops, tan lux, tan drop, tan lux. The color of a tan didn't like even, and I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna try it. There's something about fake tan on my skin where it does look orange, no matter what it is. I posted about my, my experience with this online. And I think it was on Instagram. Very kindly, Space and K sent me some Samantha Harrington tan, which was absolutely phenomenal. And it's the one I ended up using when I went away because it looked like my tan when I tanned. It didn't look orange. It didn't look yellow. It didn't look overly green. It didn't look overly. It was. It was. It was nice. Oh, and I used some on my face. Biggest, honestly, biggest mistake. Lucky that stuff comes off, right? And lucky I don't go anywhere that I can just sit in front of a camera and put, use makeup to cover it. Okay, so those were brands that made me hate them. It's nothing to do with me, they did it. Let me know if there's any brands down below that you're not really into or haven't been into for a long time and the reason why, and is it a weird reason? Is it a genuine reason? I would love to know your experiences. Do consider subscribing, giving this video a thumbs up and I will see you very, very soon. Soon. Bye.